In this video, I pit one of the most expensive airbrushes out there along with a really expensive air compressor up against a beginner-friendly, portable, affordable, USB rechargeable airbrush. The airbrush that also happens to be included in Jackie's brand new Super Not Another Crap Kit, available for a limited time. Before we jump into the airbrush fun though, let's unbox the box and see what Jackie has in store for us this time. Oh my God. This is bigger and heavier. This is the original versus the sequel. I'm me. Come on. Last year, I explored Jackie's first box. Now the original Not Another Crap Kit came with everything you need to create awesome figures from scratch and from the molds that Jackie provided and carefully crafted, which we did several times. Creating these characters, which are still to this day, some of my proudest little creations that sit over on my shelf in this room. All right, let's explore it together. Yay, I get a letter again. Oh, this is my favorite kind of video. Jazza, thank you for your amazing support and encouragement over these years. It's no secret that it's thanks to you that I had the courage to make my first kit. And now the second one. You honored me by making a centaur with the first one. Now I wonder what you'll make with a four-legged character. Lots of hugs to you and the team, Nerdy Crafter. So just like last time, we have a guide showing us how we can use the contents of the kit and it has everything in here. Is there an airbrush in here? The frick? I mean, so I'm sorry to chuck out your instruction manual, Jackie. It's gorgeous, but I just need to get in here. We got brushes again, beautifully branded. Thank you, Jackie. This looks like a, a variety of things, including silicon pouring and mixing tools. Oh my God, you have, you have gone full rainbow here. I am so pumped. Absolutely cool. Oh, I love this. Not only are these actual, like you know how you get all these different packs of different sculpting, like metal tools and 80% of them aren't the ones you want. I have three awesome quality ones that I can see the use for all of them. All right, we've got a silicon spatula for our, uh, where well, you want to make a cake, add a resin. Got these nail files. I don't, craft sanding stick. Armature wire, very useful. Silicon mixing pot, very useful. Silicon shapers. And of course, you can't go crafting without sharp pointy thing. Here is our mold. So you can pour into his little head and fill it up with famous stone plaster. Now this stuff is really cool. It was actually my first time using it last time I had Jackie's previous kit. <laughs> it's like deceptively watery once you mix it and pour it and it comes out surprisingly solid. So super cool stuff and definitely have been using it since. It's really awesome. <gasps> oh my God, there are dragon molds. Measuring cup for cosplay. I love cosplay. Oh yes. This is a whole nother level, a silicon. Crafting mat. And then last but not least, and I have saved this to last because I am most curious about it, a handheld airbrush, cordless airbrush. Compact airbrush, look at it. It's smaller than I expected, which is good because I saw this and I was like, whoa, it looks like a big thing at the bottom of an airbrush. But no, this, this looks way more reasonable. <sighs> Wait. it refills. I thought it was just a can of compressed air. It's a rechargeable electric portable airbrush. This is freaking amazing. Okay, for context, this is the Copic airbrush system. Now this top part, the part that turns a Copic marker into an airbrush is about a hundred dollars. Comes with the cable you need to fit it then to an air compressor machine or optionally and conveniently an air can. These are 20 or 30 bucks, but they're finite, they run out. But when it runs out, it's nothing but trash. I, I think you can refill it, which is cool, but a lot of effort and inconvenient. I have never heard of anything like this, a rechargeable, portable, self-compressing air compressor. So it comes in the box to be able to be constructed like this with the canister connected directly to the airbrush. I'm just gonna jump straight into this because I'm feeling reckless if you can't tell. <laughs> Pop a bit of blue in there, got my piece of paper. Let's switch it on. This is really good, Jackie. What have you done, you diabolical genius? I'm in love, I love this. Now, if I love this, I know a few other people who are gonna love this potentially even more and who may not have ever heard of anything like this. In the Tabletop Time Studio, they use the airbrush a couple of times a week. I use the airbrush maybe once every four or five months. I used the airbrush two weeks ago and had to use their setup because it's pretty complicated and cumbersome and a little hard to set up and pack up. This, not so much. So given that they're used to the complexity 
uh, and cumbersome nature of expensive airbrushing, I'm interested in what they think of this. Hey Murray, that's an airbrush. Is it? That's the on button. No. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty nuts. Hey Jen, check this out. That's so cool! Isn't that cool? A little more straightforward than using the whole air compressor and... Absolutely. It's really gentle too, like it's not like going crazy or anything. Yeah. Do you know my favourite part? It's 18 to 25 PSI. So I can't explode it <laughs> by turning up the power. I think the point is coming across. It's way more convenient than the usual airbrushing system and expensive airbrushing system we have. But is it as good as or better? Does it hit a ceiling pretty quickly? I don't know. That's what this video is gonna explore. Now, in order to jump into comparing these airbrushes one to another, it's time to give them both a foundation to work from. And it so happens that Jackie very kindly actually mailed me a pre-cast character. Now, unsurprisingly, one of the legs happened to fall off through being, well, you know, being shipped across the world. That was actually a lot less damage than I might expect from a plaster figure being sent around the world, but with a little bit of glue and putting that together, that's no problem at all. Then it was just a matter of using the kit that I now had and had unboxed to pour another one. I left it overnight to set, you probably don't need that long. I came back to it a few hours later to remove and I was a little aggressive in my removal. The, the leg came off, this time the opposite side of the little character. So again, bit of glue and your eye is rain. And these two characters would be the foundation that I can work from to create a little bit of a fun experiment for both of my airbrush projects. Now, of course, it bears direct mentioning for those of you who don't know yet, this super not another crap kit, amazing box of awesome value that I've already shown throughout this video is available, but for a limited time left. The link's in the description. It is, of course, a huge support directly to the very amazing Jackie, or the Nerdy Crafter, as she's known, who's also a wonderful person and awesome YouTuber. Go check out our channel, and please consider supporting her by getting the Super Not Another Crap Kit. I am 100% willing to back up the value of this kit and Jackie's incredible choices, but let's explore one element of this kit, the awesome and innovative little airbrush system, and compare it to a pretty heavy hitting comparison. So I said about creating a character to represent each approach. The first would be the expensive approach, represented in practice by the Harder and Steenbeck airbrush, the Infinity CR Plus, which is valued at around $400. Being pushed through with an air compressor, that is, again, not cheap. It cost me about 350 bucks. So we're looking at a combined value of about $750, which is gonna come up against Jackie's airbrush. But I thought to represent the more expensive airbrush, I'd sculpt a quadrupedic draconic character who's a little snootier than his other compatriots. With a scarf and a turtleneck sweater, of course. I feel sorry for anyone who watches my videos and, and likes wearing scarves and turtleneck sweaters because that's my default for like snootiness. It's a stereotype, I'm sorry. Anyways, I just went for a really fun, playful character. Basically, a few props just to customize my little animal body, adding a tail, adding a little bit of details. Nothing too crazy though, because really this experiment is about comparing the airbrushes. Enter my second character. This time he's gonna be a little more playful and forgiving. Now the airbrush included in this packet, MSRP is somewhere between the realm of 60 to 90 US dollars. That's for the USB-C rechargeable compressor and an affordable airbrush that usually comes with it. I have to say, I am so thoroughly impressed that Jackie could fit what I'm gonna call an $80 valued airbrush system into a box she's charging $150 for. That is such incredible value considering it includes paints, a palette, clay, sculpting tools, brushes, glues, a mat, plaster, custom molds, the list goes on. It's incredible value and I just, I have to call attention to that because it really is very exciting. And I hope you find this little creature that I've made to represent this fun little airbrush system very exciting too. He's a bit goofy, but he's a lot of fun and I'm keen to have a lot of fun. But let's start by getting them both ready to paint. First of all, by curing the clay, since the cos clay included in the packet is a polymer clay, technically it can be oven baked, but you can also, it turns out, cure it with a heat gun, which I did gently and over a little bit of time just to make sure it was fully cured. Once fully cured, it's time to hit them both with a base coat just to make sure that they're gonna take to the paint easy, and then onto the airbrushing, starting with our expensive hard hitter. 
Before you can start spraying, it's time to set up. And sorry, Jackie, I love your box, but it's sort of the perfect size and shape for an improvised spray booth. So with a bit of tape and cutting up, I have a bit of a, a back area that I can test spray on and also catch over spray. Then on to setting up my air compressor and my airbrush. I'm gonna say this is a, a higher end air compressor. It's not one of the most expensive ones you can get, but it's not cheap. And being a professional air compressor, it's a little bit fiddly. You have to obviously manually set the PSI and pressures and because I'm a glutton for punishment, and I get things that I don't have training or experience to use, I have already broken one of these expensive airbrushes. So this is a brand new, or reasonably new one, the Infinity CR Plus. Again, valued at $400 and immediately I couldn't get it working. This has been a consistent experience of airbrushing with finicky and professional tools for me, mainly because I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm getting a lot of bubbles inside the paint canister and that's because there's some sort of blockage along the tip of the nozzle. Usually in this process is where I start to deconstruct to try and diagnose and you know, if I had a bit more time, I'd more thoroughly clean out the nozzle and those fittings. But in this situation, I uh, deconstructed a different expensive airbrush and put that fitting in place of it because it matches and it sort of worked, so. Problem solved for now. Now with a functional airbrush and air compressor, it's time to set about to work. Going over the whole thing with another base coat of black just to make sure everything is neat and flat and colored and switching over to a white and giving it what's called a zenithal, a top-down light highlight, helping all the details pop, sinking darker areas back into the shadows and giving me a clear way of creating a value difference between the raised areas and deciding where I can emphasize and make areas pop more. With the Zenithal down, I went through in light layers of different colors, starting with a purple, working up to a mix of purple, white, and blue, and then eventually I'd come back and add some highlights in greens and blues. Last but not least, switching over to a red and testing my accuracy on painting the hair without painting or overspraying other areas of the character. This is where airbrushing is really fun. When you actually have a flow happening and you can move between colors and create smooth gradients and pull the attention around on your piece, it's a really satisfying process. With the base colors down on all the fur or skin areas of my character, I switched over to a bit of hand brushing, in particular giving a base black coat to the turtleneck and a nice red on the scarf. After popping in a few details in the eyes, the whole character starts to feel pretty final, but not before I go back to the airbrush one last time to just add that little bit of pop. The flat black and red look nice, but they could look even nicer with just that little bit of emphasis, which is where the airbrush really shines. And here it is, my first airbrush character. This was really fun and actually really simple to build. There are so many tools in the kit that I didn't have a chance to really leap into because of my focus on the airbrush here. But as you can see, even with a really straightforward and minimal approach, you can get some really fun results. But of course, that was with me putting in and using some of my more expensive, personally owned tools. Let's switch over to Jackie's more affordable and portable, rechargeable USB powered airbrush. So time to clear the desk of the clutter caused by the big compressor and enter my new little airbrush. Now, I will freely, freely admit that I am biased. I enter this wanting to 100% root for what Jackie has created and also with a lot of trust for what she's made in the past and for her expertise as a creator. So I'm not gonna try and not be biased, but I am gonna be honest with my experience. And I think the best way to put it is I was expecting it to be a positive experience and it 100% met that expectation. And to be honest, the biggest thing I really wanted out of this is exactly what I got and that is convenience. Everything that I was using was in my hand and it had an on and an off button. For someone less experienced, this means there's less mistakes that can be made and just makes it really easy to just decide how much paint you're putting out without needing to worry about anything like airflow or air pressure. The zenithal coating down on my next creature, it was time to pack down some color, starting off with the blues and this time working up towards the greens with a little bit of a tint in the yellow highlights that I'd get to later. 
This is the next thing I wanted to comment on is actually the paints that come with Jackie's pack. They're actually airbrush paints, which means they're much more diluted than normal opaque paints that usually are a little bit thicker. That is again, one of those things that always tripped me up in learning to airbrush, having to thin down paints and make sure that there's not any lumps that are gonna clog the airbrush. And trust me, it still happened a lot. The fact that you can actually just pour these paints directly into the airbrush and go without any worry of it clogging is really convenient and just makes it such a learner's delight for people who are beginning. Like with my other creation, I had to of course test a little bit of the finessing and detailing and Honestly, and again, like I said, I know I'm biased, but it feels exactly the same because I am only so skilled. Even the expensive, very professional airbrush was limited in my hands because I am not a professional airbrusher. A tool like that is really for someone like uh, Angel Giraldis, a miniature YouTuber who uses airbrush masterfully and for such precise and minute details. Anyway, time to set the airbrush aside and duck into a little bit of hand painting before coming back to finishing it off. With those details punched in, I decided to come back with just one last little detail spray. A lighter purple to add some highlight and shine to the hair, and then a slightly darker pink to put some shadows in the bow tie. Really subtle touches, really easy to add, but really use the strength of the airbrush to my advantage. And here he is, my second creation. And I think it really speaks for itself that I, I honestly believe the quality of this easily matches the quality of my first creation. I don't think there is any loss of accuracy or quality necessary for a creation of this style or type from having used a much more beginner-friendly airbrush. In conclusion, what is better? Neither. Both. It's completely subjective. If you don't have a budget and you need the absolute best physical possible results, then yeah, spend a thousand dollars on an airbrush and a compressor. But if you just want to try airbrushing, then this single inclusion in Jackie's box is super worth the money and I can 100% see that I'm actually going to be using this more in the future than my expensive ones because it's so easy. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's more about having fun making stuff, which I did today. Let me know which is your favorite, both out of the airbrushes and out of my creations. Let's call him a, a uh, snobicorn. <laughs> or my enth enthusia dragon. He's so enthusiastic he forgot his wings. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe for more fun without creativity, you know all that stuff. It's the YouTuber stuff. I hope to see you in the next video while we have a bit more fun with creativity. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.